Welcome back. We are joined by Greg Angert, beer director for the Neighborhood Restaurant Group, a James Beard Award nominee. The group includes coming soon in Georgetown, the Sovereign, very soon. Uh, also in DuPont Circle, you have GBD and uh, Iron Gate. Indeed. Greg, it is always good to see you. See you what too, do we have on tap this week? So in honor of, I guess, the Sovereign in some ways, we have a Belgian-style oh, beer. That was not planned. No, 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 it wasn't. He had no idea I was saying that. He just cued me up. Um, and then, uh, but also wanted to pay some homage to some of the amazing local beer that is really steamrolling. I mean, we, every week it seems like there's it's bananas, better and better local beer available to us. And this one's from... Uh, a little brewery located on a 290-acre farm just northwest of Richmond in Goochland County. It's called Licking Hole Creek Craft Brewery, uh, and these guys make awesome stuff. So they have a base triple. It's called Three Chopped, and then this is what happens when they age that base beer for 12 weeks in Kentucky bourbon barrels. Wow. Um, so bourbon okay. barrel, three chop. Nice foam on there, too, from bottle conditioning. Mm -hmm. Oh, mommy. Whoa. Nice. How long have these guys been around? Uh, just a couple of years now. Three years, I think. Nice. Um, oh, and it's so smooth. It's a smooth, smooth thing. Yeah. It's funny because bourbon barrel aged blonde beers like this that are you know stronger, uh, even at the base, can be dangerous because it can be really huge amounts of bourbon or it can be huge amounts of tannin, wood. And they're both there, but like they're, and they're good too because it's still, it's flavorfully booze and you've got some wood but it gets up close and doesn't go over the edge you know i think it remains in balance really well also i like the kind of white port sherry like um mm. oxidized character that it has in the nose just it's a nice nougaty kind of uh caramel yeah, that, that's a good description yeah. what what's the uh where does this uh pile in at i think it's like 11 percent oh mild the session beer Wow, that's that's, but that's it's, amazing. It's neat, you know, a, a great, and, and um, this is, is a, I, I think, very kind to this beer to make this reference, um, is you think of like Allagash Curio, mm -hmm. which is their bourbon barrel triple they've been making for a long time. And I think that it's similar. This is actually, um, seems a little bit more, uh, less triply and, and more just like Belgian strong ale. It's bigger on the palate and richer, I think, than the Curio is. But um, I mean, an amazing beer for sure. If you are a newer brewery, I mean, you say they've been around for a couple of years or years, whatever, yeah. two, three years, mm -hmm. a few years. Uh, how, how, what's the quickest you can get up and rolling with a barrel age program? I mean, I know at Blue Jacket, where <coughs> we, we tape a number of times, yeah. although people can't see it, right uh, to the side of us is all your barrels, which yeah. I know that some have been active a shorter time and a longer time. Yeah. How, how long, what's the quickest you can get a barrel aged beer done? So, <clears throat> I mean, you'd be surprised. Like, some of this stuff is, you know, like this one's only in for 12 weeks, so that's three months. It depends on the newness of the barrel. So a freshly emptied bourbon barrel is gonna have lots of generous bourbon coming at you. Um, and the warmer months are gonna pull out a lot of that bourbon uh, character quickly. Cooler months tend to pull out more of like the tannins of the wood. So, you know, you, and, and, it, and it definitely varies. So even sometimes if, if a brewery says it's always the same amount of time, it's all really should be based on taste. You know, you go in and you taste and you say, you know, we've had Imperial Stouts be ready out of bourbon barrels in eight weeks. Then we'd have those that have lasted nine months. It has to do with type of bourbon, how long the bourbon was in the barrel prior. We did a beer with 21-year-old um, uh, Willet barrels. So it took time for the beer to kind of coerce the bourbon out of the barrel, and that ended up being in there for nine months, whereas we've also done beer in freshly emptied Jack Daniels barrels, which has only been in there for six weeks because it just came flowing out. So it's kind of interesting. Uh, the only thing I will say to that, too, is, you know, you got to make sure that you get your base beer done right first before you jump headlong into barrel aging. I think sometimes uh, a new brewery will open with some beers that are still kind of in their, you know, the, the development phases. But in order to want to have barrel-aged beer right away, they'll put some barrel-aged beer, you know, they'll put beer in barrels right away. And then what ends up happening is by the time those beers are ready, they've actually improved their base beer to the point where that the barrel-aged beer doesn't quite stand up yet. So guys like these kind of waited before they really developed their barrel program. And I think it shows because uh, this is amazing. It's delicious. Really good what beer. What would you pair it with? So I love triples, especially those that have a little bit more full sweetness here, with anything that has like garlic or basil 
like parsley and things like that. So, I mean, it's funny to take an 11% bourbon barrel aged beer like this and just pair it with like some straight up cheese pizza, but I think that that would be absolutely delicious. Um, or just like, you know, classic red sauce, spaghetti and meatballs would be great. But also you could do it with like, you know, sp spicy Thai cuisine uh, would be delicious. You know, things that have like lots of basil, papaya salad. It's got some cool kind of apricot -y, uh notes too. And that makes it a really nice match for like, uh, you know, those kind of bright citric and, and spice flavors of Thai cuisine. Tell me if I'm wrong, and you never tell me if I'm wrong because I think you're just too nice. But I mean, it's, to me, like a steak au poivre with the peppercorn sauce on top, would that not be with the, oh, with the kind of the bourbon taste? Oh, yeah. Because uh, black pepper and bourbon is so tasty yeah. together, too. I think that I'd be more interested in this with that sauce than even like the, the steak itself, maybe. Um, but yeah, that'd be great. And the tannins in the beer, too, could dig into the richness of the steak. Dynamite. Look forward to seeing more from these guys. Uh, Greg, thank you as always. Thank you. Everyone, please. Always drink responsibly and be sure to bring your thirst next time for another beer of the week.